everybody, I am Jared Clark with Air Guns of Arizona. Today we're going to be taking a look at some real American muscle. In front of us we have the American Air Arms Evil, we have the Evil Magnon in 30 caliber, and the Evil PRS in 30 caliber. These absolute works of art in front of me are made here in the United States and they are built to the highest quality you could possibly expect out of an air gun. Both performance, build quality, each and every one of these is a masterpiece. So we're gonna take one as you would get it out of the box. We're gonna put it under the microscope like we usually do here and give you some hard information. Look at all the things the rifle has to offer and shoot it at 20 and 50 yards. So stick around, we'll go get one out of the box, come back here and meet you and start doing an unboxing. Just gonna do a quick unboxing here and see exactly how it comes. The beauty of this gun is the simplicity of this gun in my opinion and the box reflects that. There's not an inch for it to wiggle really. Foam is cut perfectly for the gun. So you have your gun here without a scope. So we have the 30, like we said it's the PRS stock. So this is the 18 inch barrel configuration 30 cal and the only other thing down in the box it's gonna be the magazine. You can go online. The manufacturer's website direct has a lot of the schematics and O-ring sizes and, and uh, really meaty information like that. That's how you could expect to get it right out of the box. So we went ahead and mounted the MTC SWAT scopes. I think these just look really awesome on this gun. They're a zero eye relief scope. So the fact that this doesn't produce recoil makes it possible, but you get 12 power magnification. So as a hunting scope, this is a cool setup. It's lightweight, it looks really good in my opinion, and it gives you 12 power to work with. And that's what we went with on this setup. A lot of people will usually use a high magnification scope because this gun justifies it. And when we go out to 50 yards, we might switch over just to get it as much magnification as possible. But the prismatics are a cool little setup. They're very unique. You won't see stuff like this out there on a lot of other scopes due to the recoil. Um, but since it's an air gun, I thought it was a really cool look. Comment below and let me know if you agree or if you disagree, either way. <laughs> so this one is the PRS. And what dictates that, the easiest way to tell is quickly look at the buttstock. The Magnon does not have this adjustable buttstock with cheek and length of pull adjustability. The Magnon is fixed. So that's the quickest look. There's some other small differences and we'll talk about that as we go through them. But the first thing that grabs you on this, this is a 100% mil spec rifle. It uses all, anything you could use on an AR can be used on this gun. Grip, buttstock, it's got the Picatinny accessory rail that runs the entire length of the air cylinder here. So it is a tactical looking gun in my opinion. And it's a really good looking tactical gun because it's very thin. It, the profile of it really meets that sporter style. So it doesn't have a big bottle on it. There's nothing, cumbersome on this rifle. It is ready to be thrown in a truck, in a Polaris, in a quad, and it's ready to hit the field running. It's, it's rugged and you'll feel it when you pick it up. There is no wobble, there's no flex. That's the biggest thing I think I like about the Evil. It is, it's tactical and, and you feel it when you hold it. You, you, you really feel the rigidity of this rifle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this gun head to toe. We're gonna highlight some of the features it has, show you what you could expect and what is normal for the Evil PRS here in front of us. So I'm gonna start back. We talked about this is the Magpul PRS stock. You have two points of adjustment. So you can raise and lower your cheek piece just with that adjustment screw right there. And then you can also increase and decrease the length of pull on that one right there. So it's a very familiar stock. I'm sure many people have them on their ARs and it's gonna swap over and make it feel like it's a real rifle when you're shooting it. So two points of adjustment on that. And you also have on the other side here is a quick detach point for a sling. If you wanna use a uh, Magpul sling, there is an eyelet there that you can snap a quick detach into for that. So that's the PRS Magpul stock it has. You also then have the Magpul MOE grip right here. This is a pistol grip style, but it works well with the Magpul buttstock to give you that tactical feel like we're talking about. You know, we talked about the gun kind of being a work of art, that these are made in the USA, and that the trigger is one of those features on this gun that really hammers that point home. You can kind of see it there probably, but it's a bright purple. Each one of the trigger blocks is anodized in this bright purple, and it's one of a kind trigger. It is insanely crisp, it's a purely mechanical trigger, and it is one of the coolest features on this gun. I absolutely love the trigger. It is adjustable, but there's really no reason to do it right out of the box. I would say it comes right around a pound, 
give or take a little bit on each gun, but it is so crisp and it breaks like glass. I love the trigger on this gun. Right above that, this is a mechanical safety paddle style. So when it's down, it will allow the trigger to engage, the trigger sear to engage. When it's up, it physically blocks it, and now your gun is in the safe position. The right above the Evil logo here, you have the um, Picatinny style scope accessory rail. It has 40 MOA built into it, so it actually sits on a little bit of a slant for you, and that's good because pellet rifles don't shoot as laser straight as, as rim fires do when they're going supersonic. So he's he's helping you here. He's he's canting your scope for you a little bit, so you can help catch the trajectory arc, and you should be able to shoot the gun out to you know 75, 100 yards without needing to do any kind of adjustable mounts or anything like that. It's a cool feature really works well at 50 plus yards for you. So the side lever, as we can see on the breech, it operates right here. This gun produces a lot of power for its size. So it does have a pretty stiff hammer to be able to do that. So the hammer is, is good and stiff on that, but it is smooth. It's, it's an easy action to operate, but side lever, nine shot magazine in the 30 caliber. The barrels right here are shrouded, so this is the shroud we're looking at. This one uses an 18 inch TJ barrel. So when we talk about how much power it's producing, it's, it's pretty insane for using an 18 inch barrel, but everything on this, and I love the shroud system, it connects with very, very fine threads. So everything is torqued, everything has a lot of threads for it to secure on, and that's why it just feels so rigid like it does. The shroud has really fine threads here that it connects at. The barrel has really fine threads here that it connects at and everything is torqued down really hard. There's nothing free floating in there. It's all locked down. And this mod that comes out as it comes from the box is really very mild for how much energy and power you're getting. Everything's really well put together on this. Underneath it here, we have a 290 cc air cylinder. This air cylinder is made out of titanium. So it's incredibly lightweight. And then it also gives you the ability to hold a little bit higher pressures. I, I fill these to 4,000 PSI. Absolutely no problems. The regulator works just fine starting at 4,000, but titanium 290 cc air cylinder on this one. On top of the air cylinder, that's a standard style quick connect. You just snap on, it always stays here. Um, so you can put a little magnet dust cap over it or something if you wanted, but that always stays on the gun. Just simply connect to it to fill the air. There is the gauge. That is a one inch um, gauge that'll tell you how much air is in your cylinder. The one on the top tells you cylinder pressure, one underneath here on the bottom, another one inch gauge here. This one will tell you regulator pressure. So since we're there anyway, this sits right below this little housing right here is where the regulator does sit. So this gun we can see is just north of 2000 that it operates on the regulator and the regulators do a great job. We'll talk about that on the range, very consistent and they do really good work with the small barrel to produce that you know 80 plus foot pounds that we're going to see when we start pushing some 50 grain pellets over it the picatinny accessory rail is about it's probably about 13 14 inches long but it runs the entire length of this so you can choose where you put your bipod i've seen people run nrl style accessories on here too you can run a uh, hand guard for an ar all of it works and you can do actually more than one with all the length you have here to work with so that is the prs version i'm going to grab here the other 30 caliber option, this is the Magnon, is what this one's called. And there's just some quick differences. As first, you can see it's a little bit shorter. So instead of an 18 inch barrel, this gun uses a 15 inch barrel. And then also with that, the air cylinder itself is a little bit smaller. So instead of 290 cc's, you're getting 250 cc's out of the Magnon here. The other big difference that you're gonna have on these guns, and it might be the only other difference, Give them a quick scan. Yeah, the only other difference, the butt stock that comes with it. This one's fixed. There's no adjustment with it, but it is lighter weight. This gun without a scope comes in right at six pounds. This gun without a scope comes in right at 7.2 pounds. So everything is a give and take. If you need the gun to be carried around with you kind of as a hunter, this one might fit your bill a little bit better, being a little bit lighter weight, but they're both gonna give you good shots, good energy. Quality is what you, you know, inherent quality is the same between them. You just have a couple different weights and profile options for different jobs. So with the shorter barrel length between the guns, you will see a small dip in power. The longer the pellet has in the barrel to build pressure, the more velocity it'll have. So naturally this one's gonna be a little bit slower. It's not much, but we'll talk on that at the 20 yard range when we run some numbers. These are both very efficient hunters. They're both very efficient target shooters, as we're gonna see. And it's really, you can't go wrong with it. It's more of a personal preference than anything. So we're looking at the EVIL 30 line today. Um, American Air Arms does produce the line of EVILs in 22 caliber as well. They have a full length and a mini. We'll be doing a separate video review of those, so keep an eye out for that in the future.
The American Air Arms Evo does come with a three-year warranty. So for the first three years of the life, if you have any manufacturer defects, you are fully covered and we here at AOA are that warranty center for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some air in it. Um, we're gonna meet you at 20 yards and calculate some foot pounds and shots per fill, all that good stuff like we normally do. And then we'll take it out to 50 and shoot it for accuracy. So let's go get some air in it. I'll meet you back at the range. Okay, so we have filled the guns up to the 4,000 PSI fill pressure that they can handle. And we're gonna do a couple things here. We're gonna calculate the energy and foot pounds we get using the 50.1 grains, as well as calculate a shot count that we'll get from that 4,000 PSI fill. But before we do that, the first thing we're gonna touch on is loading the magazine. The magazine is all metal construction. It really matches the um, gun well in terms of build quality. And it works the same way as a lot of magazines that you're familiar with, like Marauders. It actually functions the same way, but due to its really good build quality, you don't have the spring tension that you have to hold. So you wind it all the way here and I can let it go. I don't have to hold this piece and flip it over and try and stick my tongue out just right to get it in. And I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm gonna put the first one in skirt first. So that one's in there like that. And then as I come back around, I just drop each one in nose first. So it's a really simple process once you're used to it. And what's nice about this one is you don't have to manually set the spring tension yourself. It's um, built to a high enough spec that it just holds itself open and it'll still tension itself to each shot as the probe comes in and out of it. So 30 calibers are nine shot magazines and there we have a full mag. So as we cycle the bolt in and out, it'll just cycle to the next pellet as we go. Installation is simple too. It's got a nice ball detent on the back here and that will just kind of snap into place. So you just kind of go in from the side here you heard that it's faint click, but it's in there nice and secure. Can't pop out now. So we got the magazine loaded. Let's go ahead and see what kind of group we can get here at 20 yards. And we'll try and keep as tight of a pattern as we can at 20 yards. So that is an entire nine shot 30 caliber magazine. I'm just busting out the center. The entire uh, center of the paper is almost gone. So it's good repeatability. I, I love that at 20 yards. It gives me good indications for 50 yards. Um, so let's find out how many shots we'll get and roughly what kind of velocity that they're moving at. So we'll get the chronograph hooked up, refill it with air, run one more test with this guy at 20. Okay, so off of a 4,000 PSI fill, we were able to get right at 30 shots with the Evil, which is really impressive because at those 30 shots, I was averaging about 881 feet per second, it looks like, with the 50.1 grain JSBs. So if you calculate that out, that's gonna be 86, I think, 87 foot-pounds of energy. So to get that amount of energy from the small barrel, it means the regulator's working well, it means the valving's doing what it's supposed to, but we're getting 30 shots, 84 or 87 foot pounds rather, sorry. It's really impressive on a platform like this. So great results here at 20 with the PRS. We're gonna put some air in the Magnon here, to tell you what kind of shot count you could expect to get out of the 30 with just a little bit smaller spec. So let's get that one filled up and we'll give you some info on that. Okay, so off of the Magnon uh, 30 caliber here, off of a 4,000 PSI fill, I got right at 25 really good on regulator shots. Um, my average was right at about 830 feet per second. And if you calculate that, it's 70, just shy of 77 foot pounds of energy. So still a lot of bang for the buck in this small, lightweight, you know, I would call this one kind of the hunting supreme. It's very lightweight and made for carry, but still 25 shots at 77 foot pounds. That's great for this. And they're just lacing them all through the same hole down there at 20. So good results here at 20 yards with both the Evol Magnon 30 and the PRS 30. I'm thoroughly impressed with the shot count and the amount of energy you get, as well as the accuracy. So a lot of good indicators leading into 50. Let's take it out there and see what kind of accuracy we can hold together at a little bit further distance.
We have the American Air Arms Evil 30 PRS out here at the 50 yard range. We're gonna be utilizing an Atlas style bipod here to help keep the gun steady. And then I went ahead and put a magnified scope on here to help us get a little bit more magnification down range. So the name of this game is gonna be uh, Titus Group. We're gonna do five shots, see what size group we can hold together. And then we'll take it back inside and wrap this one up for you. Sweet. All right, name of the game was group size, and I think we did a pretty good job with the evil here. So let's get a closer look. That's five shots and 30 caliber. So that's right on top of each other. I didn't do the best job of zeroing my scope, but again, group size was the name of this game. So five, that's 50 yards. I mean, I'll put the one inch reference coin up for you to look at, but it dwarfs it. It's probably closer to half an inch on that group size. So evil 30, five shots at 50 yards, that's gonna be accurate enough to be doing anything you could possibly wanna do with a 30 caliber air gun. So fantastic results here, fantastic results at 20. Let's get it back in the showroom and wrap this one up. Okay, so there we have the American Air Arms Evil. This is an American-made absolute muscle gun. I, I love the build quality. We saw how efficient the regulator was, even with the shorter barrel and how much energy it could produce, getting right at about 83 foot-pounds. And the ability to do that for 30 shots is just insane for how small and lightweight this gun is. Out at 50, we showed you the pellets pretty much stack on top of each other, and this will be more than adequate for any hunting, target, shooting, competition, this gun can cover all of your bases, trust me. And I can guarantee if you pick one of these up, you'll really be impressed with it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to our channel here, comment on the video, share a like, do whatever you can for us. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, any social medias we have, please reach out to us and follow us there. Thanks a lot, hope you look out for the next video.